Iki is a two to four player game for ages 14 and up with an average gameplay length of 60 to 90 minutes published by Sorry We Are French. Iki is played over the course of a year. Each month you will be hiring different characters and increase their experience until they can retire. The characters as well as the items that can be purchased will change each season. Avoid fire and have enough rice to pay your characters and you will be able to collect many bonuses and the player with the most Iki points at the end of the game wins. To set up the game, place the game board in the center of the table with the side up equal to the number of players. Next, separate the cards for each season, identified by color and kanji printed on the back. The spring will have pink, the summer will be green, autumn will be an orange, and winter will be blue. Shuffle each deck individually and place them above each matching quarter of the rounds. Next, collect fish tokens, tobacco tokens, and pipe tokens, and separate them the same way as you would the character cards. Place the winter or blue tokens face down between autumn and winter. The orange autumn tokens place between summer and autumn and the green summer tokens between spring and summer. The spring tokens will be placed on the board. The fish tokens will be placed face up below the fish market here. The two pipes and the two tobacco tokens will be placed here where they are sold. On the bottom half of the board, place the four fire tiles face down here, and based on the number of players, place the same number of Iki tokens here to be collected when surpassing that many points. Shuffle the building deck and place six random cards face up on the side of the board and return the rest to the box. Place the single mon or coin tokens, the four mon tokens, the koban tokens, and the special tokens. These tokens can be collected when retiring certain characters and can have ongoing effects throughout the game or just used one time. In addition, place the sandal tokens, wood, and rice. Next, give each player a player board with the side up equal to the number of players. Along with this board, give each player a matching oyakata, large meeple, ikizama, medium-sized meeple, four koboons, small meeples, and score and firefighting markers. Also from the supply, give each player coins equal to eight mons, a sandal token, and one rice. The four koboons and ikizamas can be placed on your player board here along with your sandal token. Each player will put their point marker on the zero of the Iki track and then randomly choose a first player and place their Oyakata closest to the street in the starting area and then going left, each other player will place their Oyakata. In reverse order, each player will place their firefighting token on zero on the firefighting track with the player whose Oyakata is farthest from the street on the bottom and the player closest to the street on top. Next, take the four starting cards with the gold back and starting with the last player going right, each player will select one, placing them in the outermost stall of the Nagaya or building of their choice, as well as place their first Kobun in the location indicated here. If playing with three or two players, remove any extra starting cards from the game. Before we begin playing, let's go over a few things that will help you throughout the game. Each round acts as a month in the game. There are 13 rounds representing the 12 months of the year and the 13th round representing New Year's Day. Every three months represents a season of the year and with the new season, you will remove any leftover characters who were not hired and any fish, pipe, and tobacco tokens not collected that season. At the start of the new season, new character cards will be drawn and new season tokens will be placed onto the board. Also, at the end of each season, payday occurs. If you successfully retired a character or have one still on the board, you are allowed to collect the reward one level above the Kobun or the circled reward if they are retired. 
This is an example of what a character card looks like. On the top left, you have the cost to hire this character. Below that, you may or may not have a hiring bonus that can be paid to you immediately. This bonus here will let you increase your firefighting power. At the bottom of the card, you have the occupation along with the skill this character provides. On the right side of the card, you have the experience track. To increase the character's experience, an opponent must use your character's skill or whenever you make a full lap around the board crossing this symbol will allow you to increase all your characters by one. There are also other characters or items you purchase that can help you increase your experience. If you gain enough experience to where your Kobun would move to the circled reward, you will retire the character. Sliding it under your player board, matching the color of the type of character, and placing that Kobun back in your Kobun availability area of your player board. Buildings are another thing to be aware of. In order to build a building, you must pay the construction cost and have a Kobun available to stay in that building. Some buildings have ongoing abilities and or endgame scoring abilities listed on them. For a full list of each building, check out the appendix in the rulebook. One thing to be aware of is at the end of the 5th, 8th, and 11th month, there will be a fire in a random building. If your firefighting ability is equal or greater to the fire's strength, nothing happens. However, if it is less than the fire's strength, you will lose any character cards or buildings in the fire's path. But more on that later. Now let's go over how to play the game each round. Each month or round is split up into three phases. Each one is marked on your player board. First, place four new character cards for all players to see. The first phase, marked here with an A on your player board, has you in turn order for the first round, but in order of firefighter preparedness for every future round. You will place your Ikizama on one of the available movement options. The spots marked one, two, three, and four will let you move your Oyakata Meeple that many spaces around the board to do business at the stalls and or shop they end their movement on. This spot here will allow you to move your Oyakata first and you may move them up to four spaces and skip the first part of phase B. You collect one coin as compensation, however, you cannot collect the four coins for income or hire a character that would be available if you had chosen another location. Once all players have placed their Ikizama meeples on a location, in order each player will take their Phase B turn. Each player on their turn will choose to either collect four coins for income or spend coins to hire a new character card. If you choose to hire a character, they will pay the coins listed, check for any hiring bonuses below the cost, and immediately receive the bonus. You can then place your newly hired character in any open stall. But be aware, the four corner stalls cost two coins to place a character in. Once placed, put one of your Kobun meeples on their starting location on the character card. And remember, you must have an available Kobun in order to hire a character. Skip this step if you played your Ikizama Meeple on this location and just collect one coin and proceed to the second part of Phase B. Now you will move your Oyakata the number of spaces based on the number you placed your Ikizama Meeple on. If you wish to go further, you can discard any number of Sandal Tokens and move that many more spots. When you end your movement, you can then do business at the shop and or any one or both stalls. In the appendix of the rulebook is a full list of all characters you may encounter separated by season. The permanent shops on the board consist of the sandal shop where you can spend two coins for two sandals, the rice shop where you can spend three coins for two rice bags, the fire tower which lets you increase your firefighting power by one, if you are already at 10 firefighting power, 
and another player's token is on top of yours, you can move your token to the top of the stack so you may be the first to place your Ikizama meeple. But the overall firefighting power will not go higher than 10. The tobacco shop, where you can choose to either buy a single pipe, a single tobacco pouch, or a single pipe and tobacco pouch. Keep in mind, pipes are resolved immediately and tobacco pouches are used in endgame scoring. You also have the pawn shop, which allows you to spend one rice to collect four coins, or spend one sandal to collect four coins. The construction site, that allows you to spend one coin to collect a rice, or spend one coin to build a building. But remember, to build a building, you must have all materials required before you start construction. And the last two shops are the fish market, where you can buy one fish per season and place it when purchased on the leftmost location of your player card, and the exchange shop where you can have the option to either exchange six coins for a single koban, ten coins to collect two kobans, or just collect two coins from the reserve. In this example, the player will do business at the first stall and collect one rice bag for free, as well as this stall and spend two coins to gain four points. They also wish to do business with the shop as well, spending three coins to collect two rice bags. Since this character they did business with has their kobun on it, nothing happens. But this character has an opponent's kobun. They gain experience and move up one level on their character card towards retirement. Once all business is concluded, take back your ikizama and place it on your board. Once all players have taken their turn this round, we will move on to Phase C. Phase C is end of round events and or cleanup. At the end of rounds 1, 2, 4, 7, and 10, all you will need to do is place a coin on any remaining character cards available from the round that just ended, and then you will move the calendar token to the next month. But at the end of rounds 5, 8, and 11, not only will you put a coin on each available character, you will also resolve the fire outbreak. To do this, the player with the highest firefighting power will collect the four fire tiles and shuffle to reveal one. This will be the Nagoya or set of stalls that will catch fire. The fire will start at the stall location closest to the edge of the board and move to the middle until it is either put out or dies out once it reaches the end of the Nagoya. The fire strength is determined by the round. Round 5, the fire strength starts at 5, round 8 starts at 8, and round 11 starts at 10. If there are no character cards in the first stall, the fire will move to the next stall and its power will be reduced by 1. This will happen for each stall until it dies out or it reaches a character card. If the owner of the character card has a firefighting power equal to or greater than the current fire's power, the fire is extinguished, and the fire phase is over. If the owner of the character card has a firefighting power less than the fire, the character card is removed from the game, and the owner of that card takes back their Kobun Meeple. And then the fire will move on to the next stall, and is reduced by one like normal. And the final event to go over is for months 3, 6, 9, and 12. Identified by this gourd. At the end of these rounds, you will remove all remaining fish, pipe, and tobacco tokens and replace them with the new season's tokens, as well as remove all unhired characters from the current season and return any coins placed on them back to the supply. And at the beginning of the next month, you will play cards from the new season deck. However, on the 12th month, only remove the unhired characters and leave all tokens on the board. And also remove your Oyakata Meeples. New Year's Day plays a little differently than the rest of the game, but we will go over that later. At the end of the season, salary, bonuses, and payments must be made in that order. To collect your salary, each player will collect the reward from each one of their character cards. 
If they are on the board, it will be the reward just above their Kobun Meeple. If the character card is retired and under their player board, they will receive the topmost reward that is circled. Next, we will move to the Nagoya Harmony bonuses. There are four Nagoya groups and a fifth group consisting of the four corner stalls marked with this Iki symbol below them. For each group with at least two matching characters of the same type identified by this icon here and by their color, the owners of those cards will multiply the number of Kobun Meeples in the grouping by the total number of matching character cards in that group regardless of owner and score that many points. Finally, food payments need to be paid. For each one of your characters on the board, you must pay one rice bag to the supply. Kobuns on building cards or that have already retired do not have to be paid. If you have the rice, you must pay. If you do not have the rice, you must remove any unpaid characters of your choice from the game and take back your Kobun Meeple. These are the list of events that can occur each month and how to resolve them during Phase C as marked on your player board. The final round, which is New Year's Day, plays as a single turn. In order of firefighting power, each player will place their Oyakata Meeple in front of the shop and or stalls they wish to do business with. They will conduct their business and the Kobuns will gain experience like normal and may even retire. And once the last player takes their turn, the game ends and then proceed to final scoring. To keep track of the score, use the score pad and the Iki tracker. All pink Iki are scored during the game and all red Iki are saved for the end of game scoring. Write the total from the Iki track here. Next, move on to character variety. If you only have one type, score one point. Two different types scores four. Three scores nine. Four scores 16. And five different types scores 25 points. There's a reminder on each player board here. Also, if you have a puppeteer, their type is wild and you may choose which type you would like them to be when scoring. Next, move on to fish. Depending on the number of fish you have, you will score the rightmost bonus on the fish track plus any additional iki the fish may provide. For example, three fish were purchased, so the bonus is 10 points. And these two fish have endgame bonuses on them of 1 and 7 points, making the overall total 18 points. Next is the tobacco pouches. They vary in how to score and are referenced in the appendix. But if you have at least one pipe as well, you can double the total score you receive from the tobacco. For example, this tobacco pouch is worth two endgame points, and this one is worth one for every two firefighting power you have. If you have a firefighting power of eight, you will score four points for this pouch, plus two from the other pouch, totaling six points. Plus, you have a pipe which doubles that score to 12 points. Next, score any buildings if you have any. Again, reference the appendix to learn how to score them. As well as any leftover resources. Kobans are worth three points each. Wood is worth one point each. And every set of four coins is worth one point. Rice and sandals are worth no extra points. And the player with the most points wins. If tied, the player with the highest firefighting power wins, and if still tied, the player with the firefighting power closest to the top of the stack wins. And that is how you play and score this game of Edo Artisans, Iki. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.